Hello my beautiful creatives and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B and I am happy to have you join me today. I thought I would share with you a little something that I made this weekend and um, I just have it tied with a piece of muslin that I've torn. Um, but I have always wanted to create my own little art journal and I've never done it before and I really was inspired to create one using um, a manila file folder. So that's what I use. And then I have three signatures inside of here. And I used a bunch of my um, scraps of paper and uh, craft booking papers. I've already done some decorating in it, not a lot, but some. I used lots of ephemera and some photographs and I've done some tip-ins. Um, I used some of the Jane Davenport rub-ons, which I've never used before. Um, I used washi, more pictures. I just had really a blast doing this and I have a feeling that I will be making lots and lots and lots more of these because they were so blink and fun and they're so challenging to try to figure out, okay, now what do I want to do on them? And I think for today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play in here and let you watch the process and kind of talk to you about, you know, what my thinking is and, and why I'm choosing whatever it is I'm choosing. There's all sorts of like little things and I don't know, it feels to me like it could be something that's very interactive but I just love it I just think it's such a sweet way to um, create a little memento for yourself a little something to um, I don't know I don't really have a purpose for it yet it's just something to play in and I love this little abstract that I've started over here I even put some um, sheets of plastic I think this just came this way had some inspirational words on it and yeah this is what it looks like at the get-go i'm gonna have to glue some washi down the front obviously uh but there's three signatures in there and let's just get going i think i'll just go ahead and um just play and see what happens i don't really have a plan but i do have a little drawer of paint next to me and i'm gonna grab this red that I've got over here. Now red is my favorite color and I don't use red in my art journaling a lot. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, and I'm trying to change that a little bit just because I really love using red. So because I have some on this page here, I'm gonna do some over it, just kinda take some, um, this is the Ruby Dina Wakely Media Heavy Body Acrylic Paint. And I just want to put some over here because this is um, just regular like, 12 by 12 craft paper that I've cut down to fit my little book. It is gonna absorb a lot of this paint. I probably should do a clear gesso once on my pages. I just hadn't, not for any real rationale, just because I hadn't thought about doing it. Now that I'm seeing how much this paint is soaking in, I might do some gesso, I don't know. So that's that one. Let me grab a baby wipe, keep my fingers sorta, sorta clean. And I'm gonna give that a little bit of a drying. Okay, so since I don't know what else to do on that, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the page there. Um, the pages are going to wrinkle a little bit. I don't mind that. That doesn't seem to bother me so much. There are some pages that are much, much thinner. Like this is more of a cardstock, heavier weight paper. This one's much thinner. Um, I am deciding ahead of time a little bit whether or not I'm gonna actually paint on a page. Like this is thicker, so it could handle some more paint. Um, this one's pretty thin. I think it's only going to be able to handle like washi and sticker and, you know, maybe glue stick and an image of some sort. So this page here has like this alligator texture on it, which I absolutely love. And it's kind of even shiny a little bit. I don't know if you can see that so much. See that? So I love that a lot. And I put this little thing I got off of Pinterest, creative people, easily bored, risk takers, blah, 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 blah. An image of myself because I'm a creative people. And I wrote happy, 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 happy. Or I put a sticker up there. And I want to do something to this here to give it some more, I don't know, to kind of tie it into the page a little more. Now that I'm looking at it a little bit better, I'm gonna grab a paintbrush, a small paintbrush. And I want to grab some blue, blue paint. I'm gonna grab some ocean, because that's literally what I grabbed, that's all. That's the only rationale. And I'm hoping to grab a lapis. Lapis, lapis. And I want to do, I don't know, 
Again, I don't really have a plan necessarily. Whoa, there's a lot of ocean. So we'll be using the ocean a lot today, I think. And let's, I've kind of stopped using um, paper plates or a palette of any sort. I've really sort of fallen in love with using my underpapers because I love the idea of once this underpaper is completely like zhuzhed up with color and texture and pattern, just kind of like the, an overwash of my everyday arty crafty play. I think it'll be something that'll be really fun to use in my artwork as well as a decorative paper. So what I'm thinking here is I just kind of want to put a wash of color. I'm getting that a little bit wet. This is a tag that was folded in half. Now the goal will be not to slide my book through my paint because I have a tendency to do that a lot. Hopefully I won't do that today. But I just want to put like a blue shadow around the whole butterfly. starting to shred a little bit. You don't want to overwork it to the point of making the paper not viable. Okay, I will come back to this in just a moment, um, but I have a lot of ocean paint down here on my palette, so I want to find a place to put that. And just kind of gonna go by gut, I guess. And I want to apply that with a palette knife only because I feel like if I apply that with a palette knife, I'll be able to scrape as much off that off of the table as possible and not waste it. So I have that for a rationale. I'm trying to think if there's someplace else I, I want to put that. We want to put you right there. This is a strip of actual watercolor paper. So I know it'll take, it'll be able to take a lot of painting and scraping and scrubbing. So I love that. And I like using a palette knife because I like the texture it gives you. Okay, I'm gonna pick up the rest of that blue as well. Just kind of mush it in there. No real plan, just kind of getting it in. And I want to scrape to make it as thin as possible so it will dry a little bit faster. But I do want to keep some of that yummy texture in there. Okay, I'll let some of that come off the end. Clean my palette on my palette knife on my substrate here. Oops, get that kind of mushed on there and I'll clean my palette knife with a baby wipe. And then we can go ahead and dry this. Let that cool for a minute. And then while I'm letting that dry a little bit, I'm going through my Inktense colors and I just want to see if I can find a color that would make me happy to go with the butterflies. The reason I took a break was so that I would give the plastic a chance to stay cool because it was heating up a little bit and I don't want that to heat up. I actually want it to stay nice and deliciously, I don't know, flat. Okay, let's go back to our little butterfly. Where are you, little butterfly? Nope. There you are. 
So what do we want to do with you? We want to add some more color. I'm gonna go a completely different direction. I'm gonna grab that mallard green, which is 1230. Out of my intense watercolor pencils. 1230 right here. Okay. And I want to put a shadow around them, I think. I don't know how this is gonna work. I've never used, I don't use my intense pencils well enough to know what will work and what won't work. I love the idea of having some green in here. Just picking up kind of the happy, happy, happy. Seeing if I can cause some kind of a shadow to happen. Set that down, grab myself a brush with a small, just want to have a nice small detail. Oops, try to keep the green off of the butterfly if I can. Apparently that's not gonna be possible because I'm not that graceful, but that's okay. Just kind of wash that green out a little bit. I like how that's pulling and dragging a little bit, so I'm gonna let it drag out a little more. There we go. That's enough for that little thing. Um, let's dry this and see if there's anything else I'd like to do. I'm kind of having a hankering to pull out my Peerless watercolors, which I have not used in a while. I'm going to pull those out because Peerless watercolors, if you're not familiar with those, are actually quite rad. They were formulated to colorize photographs before there were colored photographs. The photographs were just black and white. Uh, Peerless was formulated to be able to add color to that. Now, my thinking is, is that these butterflies have kind of um, a little bit of slickness to them. So I'm hoping that my Peerless will be able to color them without uh, trouble. Okay, so this is my watercolor, my Peerless watercolor palette that I created a long time ago. So it's kind of an oldie, but a goodie. It's one of my favorites. Put your back, put your mouth, please. And let's grab a watercolor brush. Right here, I think you're probably fine. This is a size four. This is my watercolor palette. And here are all of my colors that I have available to me. Now, I could make this like a realistic butterfly, but I don't want to, I want to use purple. And the purple I think I wanna use is that one to start, the number nine to start. So number nine is right here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my brush into some water and I'm gonna kinda of pick up some color off of my palette this is my Peerless watercolor palette. And I'm going to, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna start down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna just brush some color on.
let this dry and then I'll come back in with some black pen and kind of do some lining kind of work. And let's see, what pen are we gonna use? Could always use my dip pen. Why not? I love this little dip pen. So after finding a little simple sentiment put on here, the be brave with your life and doing some doodling around that, I decided that I needed some white on my butterflies because they were looking a little too dark. Um, so I added some of that and I like the way that some of the peerless is kind of floated up into some of the white so they look kind of pink instead of white. And then some more doodling because, well, because I can. There's never, I don't know if there's such thing as too much doodling, doodling. but um, I'm gonna dry that real quick and do a flip quick flip through my book and see if there's something else I might like to play on. Okay, so I've decided that I want to do a little bit of prepping on this. I don't know how much art journaling I'm going to do on it or how much abstract I'm going to do on it, but that's kind of where my self, my heart is going on this one. I want this to be an abstract of some sort. So I want to protect this background because the paper is kind of thin. I'm going to put some Della paper behind just to protect. I think this is the last page in this signature, which is why I'm being a little more careful than I normally would be. But I just want to take um, some clear gesso and smear that all over. I love how this paper is like barcodes and you know receipts all over it. I love that. I think that's enough. Just a nice thin coat. Wipe that off with a baby wipe so I don't ruin my palette knife and give that a quick dry. Okay, so that is dry. Now the only thing I don't like about the clear uh, liquid text gesso compared to the white liquid text gesso is that the clear has a much sandier feeling to it, so I don't like the texture of that. However, I might be using that to my benefit because I think I'm gonna pull out my gelatos, which I don't, I don't know if I've ever pulled these out before. I have gelatos that I use, but not this particular set. This set is a little more, I don't know, precious, I guess. Like it was brand new and it's so fancy and shiny and I don't want to like damage it, which is really quite silly when you think about it. Um, and the only thing I really have in mind is right here. I kind of want to do all three of these pages like inter, like coordinate. Like I want all three of these to coordinate. Now I have the Lord's Prayer here, which was um, some miniaturized ephemera that I had found some blue and teal washi tape, a sticker that says life is full of blessings, which I love that. And I think I want to pick up some of these blue and teal and I want to use that over here. Now, I don't know. I don't know. We're just gonna kind of like shush, shush them on, kind of mush it on and no real plan. Remember, this is abstract, so there's, the pressure is completely and totally 100% gone. I don't put pressure on myself when I'm doing abstract. Life is pressure filled enough. And I'm also going to grab this. So that is metallic. That one is metallic mint. This one's metallic blue. I wasn't planning on doing metallic, but metallic it is. That's part of, for me, what um, intuitive painting 
is about. You just kind of use what you've grabbed. And then if scariness arises, you just figure out a way to fix the scariness. So a little two metallics. Let me grab a paintbrush and dip in some water so I can like activate that and mush it together a little bit. I do want to take it all the way to the edge. I don't think I've ever used a metallic um, gelato before. So that's new. I don't really want that to crawl into my spine. I'm not going to be too careful with it, but I don't, I want to kind of keep the water from rolling into the spine. I don't want it to hurt any of the pages because these are not for the most part are not watercolor pages. These are just um, whatever decorative papers I had sitting around that have been kind of in my stash for a while and I need to figure out how to use it. Just kind of mush, mush, mush. That's my technical term, mush, mush, mush. And I don't have a lot of patience for this to dry. So I might just take a paper towel and soak up any excess water sitting here, which will mute the whole thing. I think it'll make it uh, look much more subtle, which I'm fine with. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. And then just kind of block. Okay, oh, it didn't settle out too much, that's good. I'm gonna dry this because this is a, uh, just a regular sheet of craft paper. There's nothing special about this. Even the gelato, or even the gel medium wasn't really enough to in it too much because I only did a very thin coat. Okay, how's that for matchy matchy? Now what do I want to do with it? I don't know. Kind of holding my hand on it to kind of cool it down a little bit. I don't want it to be warm. And for the most part it's dry. I don't know what am I do with it, but I want to keep painting so I'm going to grab a blue. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to go into my, my Target stash. I have two colors here, uh, Parakeet Green and Sailor Blue. I don't really have a plan. I never really have a plan, but, um, and I keep saying that, I apologize. I'm just going to use some of the paint that's in the cap. And I just want to just add some more color. that one. I'm going to do the same with the parakeet green, leaving a little bit of the metallic showing underneath the metallic gelato, just a little bit. Okay. I like the idea of doing an abstract on my last page here because it is the last page of the signature and that makes me happy. So let's just kind of rub that in a little bit. It's very scratchy on your finger because of the, the um, gesso that's on there. Really scratchy. So I'm going to have exfoliated my finger. Might not have a fingerprint by the time I'm done. Okay, it's not quite that bad. Um, I'm going to clean my finger off with my baby wipe, which is kind of drying. Um, it's been sitting out for a while. Um, and I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay, so let that cool a little bit and I'm going to grab my acrylic paint white, satin white from Target, same line. It's called the Handmade Modern line. And I want to just use my finger same manner. Um, I don't want to put too much on. We just kind of set it down and then I'll come back in and do some messing of that. So I want to kind of make it look messy, but I don't want to hide all of the print underneath. I do want to keep some of that showing. And I also don't want to necessarily white out any too much of the color that I've already put in. I just want to just get some color down. Although I say that and then I wipe a lot out. So let's grab my baby wipe and kind of undo some of that. I don't know how much I'm shaking you. I apologize if it's a lot. 
Oops. Something that I've been getting back into playing with are my Posca paint pens. I haven't used them quite a bit. I haven't used them nearly at all. Some of them I just actually activated for the first time this morning. So I'm going to pull a couple of those out because I can and because they're readily available. Um, and I'm going to add some more color, but I think I'm going to do it in like shapes of some sort. I don't know. First thing I want to do is I want to add this kind of green. And of course it's in Japanese, so I can't read it. And this is a pen that hasn't actually even been activated yet. So let me just do that real quick. And what I'm going to do, I think I'll just do some little stripes, I think. Let's make those hatch marks. Okay, let's grab some blue and do some other kind of a mark of some sort. I have a feeling this is going to be really light. It is. So we're just going to make just a couple of marks with that. And for some reason, it's looking very purple. Why are you looking purple? Maybe I ran it through some pink and just didn't realize it didn't clean my tip. There we go. Now it's blue again. So let's grab dark blue and I'm going to hold this really high and I want to do a really messy kind of a frame on this. And I'm going to go around twice. Okay, so I dug down in my stash again because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do, I'm kind of stuck. But I feel like it's very clean and I don't like it, it's too clean. Why don't I have a color palette for that? I don't know. I'm gonna grab what I think, what I hope is a similar kind of dark blue. This is Prussian blue and it's a current dash, Neo Color 2. And I just want to, using my left hand, putting that away, uh, make some marks. And I want to take a brush dipped in water and I want to kind of wash some of that away but not all of that away. Just kind of see what will happen. And then grab that baby wipe for the paper towel I had used earlier and let's blot that again. First cleaning my brush out, putting that away, and then grabbing paper towel and just soaking up some of that because I don't want to wait for it to dry. I don't have that kind of patience. Mama never has that kind of patience. Um, but I also want to bring in some more of that green, all green. So I'm going to choose uh, dark green, not because I have any like idea what I'm doing, just because that's what I want. And I'm going to put some circles because circles is my go-to. Circles make me happy. I'm going to grab a smaller paint brush and activate that green, but I want to keep it in circles, which is why I'm using a smaller paintbrush, like so. Nice and subtle. And because I still have it out, I have that Mallard Green uh, Intense Pencil, which I don't remember what I used it for, but I'm going to scrape it through. And because the paint is freshly dry, but not completely dry, it will scrape up some areas of that, which I like. See how that's kind of doing that? And to kind of help that along a little bit, I'm going to take a very small palette knife and kind of just give that a scrape because I like the texture that that gives. Now, let's add some more of that green.
I don't know if you can see that on camera. It shows up rather well here in the room. Let's kind of activate that a little bit. Probably can see that a little better now because it is a different color, a different shade of green, which I like. I'm just going to kind of rinse my brush a little bit and I want to make this area here round again. And let me see if I can wash some of that color away. Kind of like white out. Okay, so I'm getting kind of like, you know, maybe ready to be done for the day. But I want to take, before I commit to that, I have pink in here. I just realized that. So I'm going to shake my paint up real quick so I'm going to get that pink to... Probably had some pink on a palette knife. And I'm going to take the end of a paintbrush. I don't know if I have a preference, but I'm just going to grab um, this one because it's here. And I just want to make some dots. And I will come back to this page another day and do something else on it. I just don't know what. If you hold the paintbrush straight up and down, you'll get polka dots. If you hold it off to the side a little bit, you'll get kind of like eggs or the egg shape or I don't know. If you dot off a few times, you'll get dots of varying sizes. If you want all your dots to be the same size, you will need to dip in between each dot. Or if you touch down on the second dot, then that's you'll just have to keep doing that all the way across, touching down the second dot. I like my dots to be different sizes. So I'm just gonna do it until I'm happy. Like so. And then I'm gonna come over here. Um, I also find that every once in a while when I'm doing this, I'll need to clean off the end of my brush because you do get a little bit of a buildup of paint on the bottom of your paintbrush. And what will end up happening is your dots will end up getting bigger and bigger every time you um, dab down because you now have this huge globule of paint that's kind of creating a large base, which you may not like. I don't mind it so much just because I like my dots to be of varying sizes. But I do stop and clean off my little end every now and then just because of that. Now those will take a little while to dry because they are a little bit thicker than the rest of the paint on the page. It is raised up a little bit. So just clean that off with baby wipe and put that away. And now that I made those little dots, I'm kind of happy again. So I'm going to grab a white pen, which my pen is not working very well. But what I've been doing is just kind of scratching it around and around and around and around and like really just being very scribbly with it. And I'm loving that. And that's because my paint, my pen is not working so well. I'm wondering if I ran it through something I probably shouldn't have. That happens. Like right there, I just ran through some wet paint. Just kind of start writing again on my under paper and it comes back to life. Like so. That paint right there is very wet. Grab my paper towel and kind of give that a scrub a little bit. There we go. That one looks a little better. Probably because that circle is much drier than the others. Okay. Now I'll grab some black pen. Do the same thing. Not quite as many because I don't really need to. This page is kind of dark already. I'm going to take my pencil. And you know, if you've watched my channel a while, I like to grunge up my page by scribbling with pencil. So I will do that again. Do I want to do anything else on this page today? I don't know. I think that I'm going to probably call that good for now. Made a big mess out of my desk, which is 
that's how you know I'm having a good time is when I make a big mess out of my stuff. I'll come back to this another day. Either, ooh, almost ran my fingers to my dots. Add some more imagery, do something to this side over here. But you see how it kind of, it doesn't match necessarily this, but it coordinates, it complements it. It looks like they go together. So that is that finished, well, that's the page as it stands today. And I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna call this good for the day. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of fun in this little, this little, I don't know what to call it. I don't know, my homemade playbook. So thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I will make sure to share progress with you in this awesome, I don't know, my handmade playbook, because this is what this will be about. It's just me playing and it's small and it's portable. It's something I could take with me, throw it in my bag, not a big deal. Plus, I love that it can be closed with my little ribbon. Um, I think what I will do is I will attach that ribbon eventually, but I want to make sure that the cover is completely painted and arted on before I do that. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you so, so much. I am always in awe that you come and watch me and I'm so grateful for the positive comments and the feedback and the thumbs up. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. My little channel really appreciates the help. If you wouldn't mind sharing this with your friends, maybe they might find something that would be cool to adopt in their own art, their own art play as well. Until next time, bye for now.